Now, when you get to the end of an experiment, you're going to be looking at your results and determining how close they were to the accepted value. There is a way to mathematically represent how close your results are to an accepted value. And this mathematical equation is solving for something called percent error. So in this video, I will be explaining what percent error is, how to calculate it, and we'll be going through a few example calculations so you can practice with percent error. So here's the equation, percent error is equal to the measured value minus the actual value in uh, absolute value symbols over the actual value and we multiply by 100 to get that percentage. Um, so this measured value, this is what you got when you did the experiment. This is your experimental value. So this is what you determined was the measurement. You measured it and you got this. This is your measured value. The actual value is what is accepted. So what what is what should you have gotten when you measured this? Um, sometimes the accepted value isn't known. So so oftentimes if this is the situation, you'll compare it to an average. Um, but this is where you put the accepted value or the correct value and then you use absolute value symbols because all we want is a positive um, we want a positive percent error and then you divide that by your actual value and of course multiply by 100 percent because we want to turn this decimal or this fraction into a percentage and you'll report this so you probably do this all the time when you figure out how well you did on a test say we're taking a test and you got 72 out of 80. All right, so 72 points out of 80 is your score. You automatically type that into your calculator and you get 90%. So to do this and figuring out percent error, we do a similar thing here. Um, we, we're taking 72 minus 80. So basically we're figuring out how many points off were we from the, the total that we should have gotten. And then we're dividing by that total that we should have gotten. And of course multiplying by 100% because we want to turn that fraction or that decimal into a percentage. So here we, we do the subtraction, we get 8 over 80 times 100%. Now 8 over 80 is 0 0.1, 0 0.1 times 100% is 10%. So here we have 10% error, that means you were off by 10%. Well initially you could have told me that. If you got 90% on a test, you were off by 10%. You were off of that 100% mark, that bullseye, by 10%. So let's take a look at it as more of a relative situation here. So say you're measuring the volume of water in a beaker and the accepted value is 10 milliliters, but you measured it at 11 milliliters. Now, if we do our percent error calculation, you're off by 10%. You have a 10% error from 11 to 10. Even though you were only off one milliliter, it was still a 10% error because you were only supposed to get 10 to begin with. Now, say you're measuring 100 milliliters and you're off by one milliliter again, so you get 101 milliliters. This would amount to a 1% error only because you're starting out with a greater amount. So even though in both situations you are off by one milliliter, you have a greater percent error when you're measuring a lower amount of liquid. Think of it like this. If you're broke and you lose $5, it's a really bad day because you don't have a lot of money to begin with. But if you're a billionaire and you lose $5, it's probably not that big of a deal because $5 is only a small percentage of what you have in total. Even though in both situations you're losing $5, it really impacts the outcome of the scenario because of what that person started with. That's how percent error works. Even though in both situations I was only off by one milliliter, it had a greater percent impact on that first example where I was only measuring 10 milliliters. Let's take a look at a practice example. You're measuring the density of a metal and you get a value of 9.89 grams per cubic centimeter. Now this is the experimentally determined value. This is the value that you got, okay? So this is your measured value. And you're gonna compare that to an actual value. The accepted density of the metal is 9.65 grams per cubic centimeter. What is the percent error? So our percent error calculation is equal to the experimental value minus the accepted value in absolute value symbols over the accepted value 
multiplied by 100% to turn that fraction or decimal into a percentage. Okay, so we're going to plug in our numbers here that I've highlighted into this, um, this problem. So our experimentally determined value is 9.89 grams per cubic centimeter, and our accepted value is 9.65 grams per cubic centimeter. Put that in absolute value brackets, and then we get um, put that over 9.65 grams per cubic centimeter. And we left the units out because they end up canceling each other out anyway, and we end up with percentage as our unit. Um, multiply all of this by 100% and we'll get our answer. So on a calculator, 9.89 minus 9.65 gives us 0.24. And then we divide that by 9.65. And we get, um, as a decimal, we get 0 0.02487, bunch of numbers. And then we're going to multiply that by 100. You can probably do this in your head or move the decimal over or however you do it. And we get 2.487. I'm going to round this to three significant figures because my numbers that I'm given are, I have three significant figures in both of them. So my answer is 2.49%. So I'm off when I do this measurement by 2.49%.